Here we go, here we go, here we go. We got him. I don't know what we got. Still too big to be crappy. Welcome back guys. Uh, we are on another fishing adventure with the trailer. And I, I talked about this earlier in the season. I said I was gonna do a little walkthrough on what I picked up this year. This is, I, I don't wanna like build it up too much. It has definitely changed the way I fish and the amount of gear I bring. I am very blessed to have the gear I have to be able to do what I do. This trailer has been a massive asset. When I was getting my snowmobile worked on last year, the guy that was working on my sled said, Jay, if you wanna keep the sled, you should get yourself an enclosed trailer. So I got a smaller enclosed trailer last year. It was okay. There's a couple things I didn't like. Kept hitting my head on the ceiling. Couldn't fit quite as much gear as I wanted. So this year we went with the Rainbow, Rainbow Trailers. This is called the Toy Hauler. It's eight and a half feet wide, which I think is as wide as you can legally get without a special permit on the highway. There's a couple cool features. I'm gonna show you how I have it set up. And we are gonna go fishing, but th this trailer has been great. I do like having the bigger size truck to tow this. I did tow this with my 1500 before. And it, it felt fine, but it felt like it was getting pulled around a little bit. But anyways, this is the Excursion Toy Hauler. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little tour of the inside. One thing that I did notice, which is really cool, is it's angled at the back here. You can see that it's, it's got this angle here and the whole trailer is kind of angled down at the back. So it's just, it's a little bit less of a hop when you get in there. Another thing I didn't know existed until I saw it on this trailer was the drive over fenders. So that's why it's able to stay so wide is you can drive over this, you can park your snowmobile on top of the fenders, super durable. I don't know what this flooring is called, but I really like it. Um, it's over top of the plywood. I think a lot of trailers would just be plywood on the bottom. And then it's all sheeted, aluminum on the outside, wood on the inside. And I'm not sure what this is on top, but this sheds the snow very well. Got the spare tire. Obviously you've got the side door, the man door over there, which is what I use a lot of the time for gear. You've got lights right here. I don't have them hooked up at the moment. An outlet so I can do, you know, I have an outlet outside so I can run an extension cord to the outside of the shack and then I could run a heater or chargers inside. You've got tie downs. The other thing which I don't really use, but I would use on the right situation, is there's a front door as well. So that's nice. You can keep everything hooked up, drive in, drive out if you wanted. Um, so like I said, this trailer is 16 feet plus the V, which makes it, I think about 20 feet. Um, what else here? This was my own addition. Put a couple auger racks, strapped them at the bottom too, or this one isn't strapped, but there's two clips there to strap it in. So I keep my 10 and my eight inch along all the time. I mean, you never know when you're gonna need a backup. And then this came installed as an accessory. My helmet stays in here. I keep extra batteries up top. I typically keep an extra suit in here as well. Uh, I'm still finding ways to accessorize this trailer. So you guys let me know if there's anything you think we should add. Another cool thing on the side here is the vents. So boom, you can just open it either way. You can have it bring in wind in when you're driving or out through the back but you know, a nice touch in summer or if you have wet gear and you're trying to dry it out in here. And then yeah, there's tie downs. But yeah, I am thinking of different ways to add, you know, maybe some shelving up top or strapping these couple mill crates in here. So basically I keep a couple mill crates, propane, extra oil, some gas, heater. We've got the snowmobile, obviously the Bearcat. This thing has been, it's been okay. Don't know how many more seasons it's gonna have. Um, this carrier on the back, I get lots of questions about. This is the Otter ATV carrier with a bucket. Nogger carrier on the side, kind of retrofitted. My friend at Two Rivers Boat Works kind of helped weld that on. So it carries a lot of gear. What I don't like about that is how wide it is on the narrow trails. Sometimes I have to take it off and also it makes the sled pretty top heavy. Pros and cons there. Um, what else? On the front of my sled, I've got this little shelf that I made up. Next time I might just mount to the handlebars. But what I like about this is I got two brackets. I got one for the Lowrance, one for the Hummingbird. So if I need Lake Master or any auto charting data of mine, I bring the hummingbird along. If I want to use some angler's edge mapping, then I bring the Lowrance along and I can just loosen this off, turn it around, and then I can have the other one mounted. As well, if I'm going on any bush trails, I got the electric snowmobile. I really like this. Um, once again, like anything, keeping the battery warm is important. Kind of a mess in here. I just got some tip-ups, live scope, but I can fit a ton of gear. I can fit all my filming gear in here, my live scope, and that's kind of the stuff that I don't want to put in a toboggan because stuff in the toboggan just gets bounced, trashed around. Um, what else we got? We got the little fuel door over here. 
Um, I normally just fill jerry cans, but you could open that up and fill at the gas station. Yeah. Let's take a quick look at the outside. Obviously important, everything's lockable. These are torsion axles, which I've heard is a good axle. I don't know much about vehicles and trailers and stuff, but torsion axle. I like dual axles. Well, I like the bigger tires. That's something that I was nervous about with it. Smaller trailers, you get those small tires, smaller axles, smaller suspension, everything just, it, it makes me nervous on big road trips. And then on the front, you've got the diamond plating, which helps with a lot of the gravel rash. You will still get some higher up. That's just in the nature of it. You're not gonna put, you know, the diamond plating all the way up, but uh, you could have obviously you could obviously have a gravel guard in the back there, but anyways, then you got the boxer that has the battery for the lights. That's that's a quick walkthrough of my trailer. Um, if you have any questions, let me know below, but Rainbow Trailers, Manitoba made, huge fan of that. And uh, they're a supporter of this channel. So go check them out if you're looking for a new trailer, but we're gonna go fishing. We're trying to catch some bait today. So I'm looking for some Cisco's, some small Cisco's to load up a pail full and then have some lake trout and pike bait for the rest of the season. So anyways, absolutely love this trailer, able to fit so much gear. I can fit two snow machines plus a bunch of gear. Um, it takes a little more, low, you know, you gotta be a little more strategic if you want to do two snow machines. For me, with how I keep it and fish by myself a lot of the time, one snow machine, I can just park it anywhere, put the gear in anywhere. I don't have to be, it's, it's not Tetris. It, there's just lots of room in there. So, yep, I love this thing. I've also got some cool shots of this over the last couple weeks uh, on some of our adventures. So we'll insert a little hype sequence of uh, this trailer in action. That's all I got, we're gonna go fishing. Love the look of this trailer too. All right, next time you see us, we'll be at the lake. Hopefully we can find the lake. All right, made to the lake, new lake, never been here before. So we can catch some bait. Um, that's the thing about Kenora. This is a lake I've never been on before. Um, there are endless, I, I just won't in my lifetime fish all the lakes. And I, sometimes I'll give Kenora anglers a hard time and be like, man, you know, why don't you guys travel further? Travel into Manitoba, travel to Sioux Luko, travel to wherever. There's just, there's too many lakes here. Like it's, yeah, I don't, pretty easy just to stay in your backyard and fish a new lake every day. I, I don't blame you. But we're on a new lake, looking for Cisco's. I want to load this whole bucket carrier up with Cisco's up to the top. There's no limit on them. They're pretty plentiful and they're lake trout candy. They are pike candy. This is what I did for the bucket carrier for a rod holder. I just took some little pieces, I guess this is ABS or PVC or something. Put a little tubes on the side. I could put more, um, but I think this is gonna be the killer today. The micro dinner bell. So game plan is I'm gonna put the head cam on. I'm not gonna bother around, bother about moving this big camera. Uh, we're gonna go head cam, live scope, move around, try to find, they're probably gonna be floating high in the water column. Yeah. I heard there's crappies here too, so maybe we'll get a couple of those mixed in, which is funny because that's typically the target, but I, I want, I'm on a bait mission. Beautiful ride in. I'm gonna stop talking now. It is so nice. This weather has just been a blessing. So with this auger carrier on the side, I know I've got lots of questions. It just slides on, it just friction fits. It just slides on like that, boom. And when it's a 10 inch, you can't put the auger, you can't, put, can't keep the cover on with an eight inch, you can keep the cover on in there, but it does bounce and wear a hole in it. You can see right there. So this is nice for nice wide trails. When you get into a narrow trail, it's just not an ideal setup. All right, Ion Alpha, here we go, first hole. Do a little kick, kick, kick. There we go. We're gonna get the weapon of choice. This guy right here. And we'll get the live scope set up. The Summit Shuttle. This thing has been, yeah, just so good to me because I've played with different shuttles. They have their pros and cons, but I haven't found anything wrong with this one. That wind is howling. I'm gonna try to answer some questions today. Another question I get a lot is, you know, what setting do you have your deucer on? A lot, I would say most of the time I have my deucer set on forward mode. This is the LVS 34. Like I said, with the summit pole. I saw a fish already. I'm gonna turn this on. We're recording. 
We're gonna drop it in. We're in about 25. Look at all those fish there, 10 feet away. This is good. There's fish right under the hole. Don't know how big they are. There's a pot of fish 14 feet away. Wow. First hole. We're gonna drop right on a fish. Look at this. That blob on the bottom is coming over already. Look at this other one moving up. That looks more like a crappy than a Cisco, but I guess we'll see. That other fish is picking up speed. Look at him. He scared that little guy away. Oh, oh, oh I missed him. That felt like a felt like a Cisco. I might have to go with something even smaller yet. I mean, I'd be fine with some crappies too. Bring some home to eat. I think I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. Going micro, super tiny. All right, we're switching to a tiny tungsten and a little plastic feather duster, feather duster rod. That is so small. These might be micro perch and I'll be very disappointed. It's gonna be so tough to feel bites. We've yet to catch a fish, but this one's moving in pretty fast. Oh, he's gonna eat it. Come on, let's catch the first one and see what we're dealing with. Wow, nothing, 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 and then just drilled it. That is not what I wanted right there. Two inch walleye, not excited about. That is maybe one of the smallest walleye I've ever caught. This is very disappointing. All right, so those are micro fish. Uh, might be a decent sized fish down there. All right, might have our first customer. I mean, still 10, 12 feet away, but it looks decently long. Could be a Cisco. Now he picked up speed. He definitely just saw the spoon. Look at this. This is a Cisco for sure. Got him. Cisco Disco. I'm calling it. We moved out a touch deeper. That is what we're looking for right there. Boom. Candy. That one's a little big for bait size, but you can chunk them up into strips under a tip up. Depending on where you're fishing, you can chum with them. Cool. All right, so now I kind of know what I'm looking for. They were suspending very clearly there. I mean, I could try to hop on top of him. He's 20 feet away. Come on, baby. Look at that. As soon as they get close, look how fast he's going now. Got him. Oh, come on, baby. I know it's just bait, but... Oh, man! <laughs> okay. That's uh, the other thing that there's a chance of catching. Nice crappy. We're gonna keep that guy. I wanna eat some fish tonight. It's probably 11 incher. Well, now we know suspended fish are the ones we want. We do not want the fish hugging bottom. Uh, tough time marking my jig right now. There we go. My deucer, that fits. so many of the issues can be fixed by dialing in your deucer. There's a good sized fish coming in 25 feet away. We're recording. Ooh, there's a couple. Could be crappies, how they're potted up like that. I think we're gonna catch these fish. All right, come on. Gonna try to guess if it's a crappie or a Cisco and I'm seeing crappie on this one. Oh, it's just kind of a taller blobish mark. No, he just went past it. This time. There's another nice mark coming in. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Got him. I don't know what we got. Feels too big to be a crappie. I think it's Cisco. Yep, nice. Stacking up the bait. Had to play with that one for a while. They're stocky fish. I don't know if I'd use one that full size as a tip-up bait, but you could use a strip of it. There was another blob coming in as I was dealing with that one. There might be another fish under me. Oh, we might get another chance at this fish. Just a slow lift away. Got him. This might be a crappy. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Sweet. The micro dinner bell is catching them all. It's like perfect eaters, 11 and a half, 12 inch probably. Well, I'll chase after these couple of fish, unless they're swimming towards us. Oh, 
Hole's perfect. I got so much slush in my hole though. Seems like he's already speeding up for my bait. I'm calling Cisco on this one. All right, here we go. Here we go. I don't know if it's crap here, Cisco. I'm saying Cisco. He just got fast when he got close and all loopy like a Cisco. Come on, I'll do the lift. There we go. Definitely Cisco. Gone at the bottom of the ice. So now it's fish of a tough time turning around in an eight inch hole. Made a move. All right, just in time. I think this is gonna be a Cisco. He's suspended and he is coming in hot for my dinner bell. Just start raising it a bit. He should circle it. It's a pretty typical move of a Cisco. Got him. They kind of have big swinging head shakes too. Gotta fill that pail. Coming up backwards. Oh yeah, there we go. Beautiful. That was a race to get the GoPro going. As soon as I turned it on, that fish was there. This little forceps always stay pinned to my jacket. There you go. Give him a little bonk and throw him in the pail. I want that to the top with Cisco's. Fish is coming in. Here we go. Oh, come on. Loop back, Mr. Cisco. There we go. I'm gonna do a little slow reel. Tap, 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 tippity, tippity, tap, 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 tap. Come on, come on. I do have to say, I thought these, I was hoping for smaller Cisco's. These are bigger than, bigger than I thought. Still gonna be useful, but I was hoping for those golden tip-up size Cisco's. That's all right. These are nice. Stacking up that meat. There we go. They just stay pinned so good with that tiny treble. All right, we're packing up. That's it. Um, new lake crossed off the list. A couple Cisco's, bigger than I wanted to catch, which is kind of backwards from most fishing trips, but I actually was hoping to catch smaller ones. Um, but got some bait for the freezer and a couple crappies for dinner. So, hey, it's all good. I could fish a new lake every day for the rest of my life around here. It's, it's amazing and I love doing these sorts of adventures. Um, yeah, that trailer, this snowmobile rig, um, it makes doing what I do a lot better. So I just wanted to share, you know, what I have. You guys might have suggestions on things I should, you know, modify my trailer, modify my sled with. Um, but yeah, for being out on the big lake, if I'm not on narrow bush trails, I do like this carrier on the back and the enclosed rainbow trailer. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I'm loving that trailer and it's just, it's perfect for big road trips. And I think it's it's a great size if I need two snow machines and gear or just one snow machine and a lot of gear. But anyways, my hands are getting cold. We've got a bit of a snowmobile ride back. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, maybe consider subscribing and uh, we'll catch you next time.